Hi, I've got a couple of demos loaded up and ready to go. And uh, one of these is going to go ahead and give off heat, and the other one's going to have heat taken in. So uh, I've got a uh, beaker of water at room temperature. The uh, red display shows that it's near 20 degrees C room temperature. And I'm going to lower the temperature. And I'm not going to do so electronically like with um, a freezer. And I'm not going to do it with ice. I'm going to dissolve a solid, which is actually going to uh, promote an endothermic process. The uh, solid is called ammonium nitrate. And I have the formula on the board. And I'll point that out to you in just a moment. What's going to happen is water molecules will surround this. And the reaction actually sucks in energy. So we're going to see a nice little uh, temperature decrease here. So as I tap this in and it's stirring, we're going to see the temperature decrease. So on a good day, it'll drop down to about 0 degrees C. So it looks like we've got 7, and it's continuing to drop. The driving force for this reaction is the dissolving. The uh, ammonium and nitrate ions are being surrounded by water. And it's going to a state of more disorder, as we say. And it's making the reaction happen. But in the process, think of it as like an energy vortex. Heat from the outside, heat from the water are sucked in to uh, make the reaction proceed. Oh, and very good. It keeps dropping at 5. There aren't too many of these reactions, so this is rather novel. I also give it the nickname of the cold pack reaction, because these first aid cold packs, these little plastic bags with an inside bag, are available at pharmacies. And what will happen is if somebody bumps themselves like in the playground, somebody might come running over with one of these cold packs. What they do is snap it, and it's mixing the water on the inside with the ammonium nitrate. And it's spontaneously going cold, as demonstrated. Another um, little process loaded up here is just a simple combustion. I have some methanol, which is a one carbon alcohol. And I'm going to spray some on the counter and just go ahead and light it on fire. And uh, flames are given off sign that we have heat. And I'll give personal testimony. It's warm. We have yellow, orange, blue flames here. It's combusting. Heat's given off. That energy that's given off as heat came from chemical energy to begin with. Bonds are being broken, which costs energy. But then new bonds are being made, and energy is being released. Let me go ahead and show you the processes up here on the board. The uh, left side is the first reaction, and that is the cold pack reaction. The ammonium nitrate is a solid, and it's mixed with water and becomes ammonium nitrate aqueous. So these are two separate ions. NH4 plus is floating around. NO3 minus is floating around in the water. And uh, at the beginning here, call it a baseline or the before enthalpy or heat, this is done at constant pressure, um, it is around here. And what's happening is it's sucking heat in from the environment, from the water and the air. The analogy might be something like your checking account. Your checking account starts here. Then it's payday, and a deposit is made. Oh, that's nice. We increase the heat of the system, or the enthalpy, the heat at constant pressure. The time axis is simply just showing before and after. I have an arrow here going, heat is taken in, so the energy of the system rises. Endothermic, or entering heat, heat enters the system. On the right side is that combustion of the alcohol. CH3OH is methanol. It burns in oxygen in the environment. And then we produce carbon dioxide and water. We start off with some high energy bonds. And then we end up with uh, basically waste products, carbon dioxide and water. When you exhale, carbon dioxide and water come out. You extinguish candles with this. We use these in fire extinguishers, very low energy molecules. We start off high, we end down low. There's a little bit of an activation energy at the beginning, that hump that we have to get down over. Heat is given off in this process. Exiting heat, exothermic. What I'd like you to do is think about the delta H values for these two. One is going to be positive. One is going to be negative. Which one do you think is positive? Which one's negative? Have a look at the plots. See what's happening to the energy of the system. I wrote down that our endothermic is positive. We have an increase in enthalpy. You can see the before and after case. And our exothermic process starts off high, goes down low. So there's a loss of system energy or system heat. So that's a nice little uh, couple of examples of endo and exothermic. I do want to point out the activation energies, which are the energies required for the reactions to proceed. The activation energy. For this, the exothermic process is just the little hump. 
These molecules need a little bit of energy. Think of it as the match at the beginning to get over the hump, and then it's all downhill from here. We call it EA, the activation energy. Now, many people will look at this and they might be thinking, hey, the activation energy is that little hump there, but it's not. The activation energy for an endothermic process would be the entire peak, the whole thing. And that's because of its being based on the definition of the activation energy, the energy required for the reaction to proceed. So we're starting here. If we give it just a little bit of energy, you might be thinking at the beginning, maybe this much, and that's not enough to go over the hump. So the activation energy is all the way over the top, and then you get a little bit back at the end.